I just started making some bread and some waiting for the dough to rise and while it's rising I thought I could squeeze in some reading because I'm currently reading Dracula by Bram Stalker and it's really just not fitting the season and the seasonal mood at all but I we, cho we chose this with a couple of friends of mine we started a book club of some sort of, we only three people but um we pick out books every couple of months and this time around, and I really don't know why we actually picked this one, it it doesn't fit the spring season at all. Anyway, so I'm really, really struggling to be honest to finish this and to keep reading because it's, I mean it's a classic, it's one I've been wanting to read anyways but it's also very sort of slow paced compared to modern literature obviously I mean it's just very different from what you're used to these days and so to help me achieve my goal of finishing this this week because we're already reaching the end of March was it which is crazy because I yeah I really can't believe that but anyways so I really would like to read something else that fits the season better, I've got one in mind which is, hold on, which is Park Life by Yoshida Shuishi. Um, it's translated in French and it's also something that I would like to do um, is to read in French more because it's my mother tongue and I realise over the last couple of years that I read almost exclusively read English. So yeah, and I think this would fit the season so much better. What I am trying to do is to so I divide it. I, I counted, I looked at the number of pages I had left to read and then I divided them by seven or eight to finish it this week. And so I have to read 30 pages every day to finish it at the end of the week. And so I use these little sticky notes to indicate, to mark like these 30 pages steps and um, what can I say, I managed to do it on Sunday, yesterday I didn't read at all, not even a single page and today is Tuesday so let's hope we'll be able to read more today and so this is going to be sort of a reading and slash baking vlog because there's mo more baking to come actually, I um, want to bake for the Easter holidays and um, yeah, this is going to be, well, it's fun, I don't know, it's going to be a challenge. So here we go.
Friday and it is a holiday which is really nice. The weather is rather sort of sunny but also gloomy in a weird sort of way and I just came back from a cafe. I managed to read a couple of pages though as you were able to see. I didn't read as much as I wanted to this week. I still have one, two, three, four, five markers left so five days worth of reading which I'd I'd like I'd really would like to finish this book this weekend so Friday to Sunday. I really hope I'll be able to do that because I'm so looking forward to reading something else. I'm still curious to see what this is gonna be like know the ending, the developing the story because so far they haven't really taken action. The characters have only realised what Dracula does but not really taken action yet and this is what is about to happen so I'm still curious to see how this is going to unfold but yeah so as the weather is going to be rather sunny it seems I'd like to sit in the balcony and um, read as much as I can. I still have 150-ish pages to read because this book has, hold on, 440 pages and so I don't believe I'd be able to make it like this weekend because today is Saturday and I have an appointment today and tomorrow we like, we're celebrating with friends and family. So, <laughs> um, originally the way I planned it it still has four of these markers, with these 30 pages markers, so it'll probably take me at least up, a, up until Monday, I guess. Which is kind of frustrating, but also just realistic, because I'm a slow reader, and this is, this is kind of hard to read, it's a classic. Um, I think I go sort of more in depth when I have finished to tell you what were the things that sort of are difficult and why it is more difficult to read than other books um, in my opinion and how I liked the story in general. I'm not going to judge it now because I'm just, I'm still hoping that there's going to be something to turn the story around, something interesting i don't know how to say this but it's just nothing i feel like nothing much has really happened yet um compared to the number of pages it's very descriptive and very sort of also sometimes repetitive because you have these letters from different points of view from the different characters so yeah what i essentially wanted to say is that i still have some way to go and We'll see how I will be able to include reading into the next couple of days. I also have some baking still that I want to do for Easter. And um, yeah, happy weekend. 
So the two things that I'd like to do for Easter is muffins, chocolate chip muffins and scones. Because I bought these I think a couple of months ago and um, well I never got around to making them. I never made scones before so I'm really curious to see how this is going to turn out. But I think I'm going to do the muffins first because I'd like for them to stay fresh for tomorrow. And, um, and then I have to leave for my appointment in a couple of hours and I probably do the scones tonight. I really do hope they can just, I don't know, survive the night and still be fresh for tomorrow morning. I, we, we shall see, maybe we put them in the, in the oven once more. I don't know if that is smart. Um, but yeah, first I'm going to do the chocolate chip muffins because my brother really wants some chocolate chip muffins. And um, yeah, so as you can see, I have these two ready to make um, baking mixtures because, um, well, we still have them at home and I don't want to waste them. And so it's kind of saving you time. So I'm going to do that and hoping for them to turn out nice. Okay, hi, hello everyone. So I realise there's no outro to this video and um, I'm using a microphone, which is really cool. Uh, I wanted to give you sort of, an, a, sort of a conclusion to what it was like reading a classic and some tips and what I did to make it easier because I, you know, as much as I enjoy reading classics, it just can be a little tricky sometimes and also tiring because we're not used to the language they used in the like 19th century, for example, which is the case for Dracula by Bram Stalker. And um, yeah, so as you saw during the video, what I did was to use these little page markers to set realistic goals, which is really, really important because this book, like here are my little page markers. This book has, oh, I think more than 400, yeah, 440 ish pages and it was just so long to read it was so long <laughs> which is really one of the most like 
one of the negative comments I wrote down in my notebook here. And I, as much as I liked reading it in a way and learning about that story because it's so popular and also reused in popular culture these days, I, well, how can I put it? I, I just think, you know, for my personal taste and I think for modern days, it would have to be cut down considerably because this is just too repetitive in my opinion. But yeah, so as I said, setting realistic goals is so important because personally I can't read 50 pages of a classic in one sitting. Like that is just too much for me. And as I'm a slow reader as well, it just doesn't make sense to set that goal, you know, of like hoping to finish the book as quickly as possible. Uh, I think I read about like 30-ish pages for every sitting. So that for me was realistic, but that is different for everyone. So you'll have to figure that out for yourself. Another thing that I noticed is that um, as it was very repetitive and was sometimes very, which I enjoyed as well, like descriptive and very sort of detailed, is reading out loud made it so much easier to focus because, you know, when you read it silently, you kind of get lost in your thoughts way easier, I feel. So this is one thing that I noticed helped me while reading. And then the obvious thing is to, when reading a classic, choose a topic, a genre, a period in time um, that you are particularly interested in. Because if you choose something that is going to be like, oh no, a topic that you don't like and the language is difficult and the writing style is something that you're not used to, then it's going to be almost impossible to finish, I guess. So we like I read this book because we my friends and I decided to read it for a book club so I also had this goal in mind of like discussing it with my friends afterwards so that was a huge like motivation point as well so that is one of my like recommendations is to maybe read it with a couple of friends and um discuss it afterwards because that you know thinking about like having some people reading it with you at the same time, um, you kind of feel like you have this sort of support, you know, you, you're you not on your own reading it, is what I'm trying to say. So to go into more detail about this book, this book in particular, Dracula, as I said before, I really enjoyed the writing style, um, not the length of the book, but the writing style, because it was really detailed and had lots of beautiful descriptions of landscapes as well, which is something I really, really enjoy, which I really like because I like to get inspired from this to write myself. And um, I also, um, without giving it away, though I think it's very well known, I um, really like the ending of the book. I think it is very well done and sort of was a satisfying ending to that very long process of, well, of what Dracula is about, like finding the vampire and them trying to get rid of him etc so I think you do know like it's such a well-known story and I also find it very interesting to observe like details about the historical context as well like for example what I like to pay attention to in particular is gender descriptions so what was really striking for me was that and in this story were showing emotions very openly which I didn't expect necessarily because you know you think about that time like the 19th century and you think well that was like what feels like hundreds of years ago and you'd imagine meant to be or expected to be and presented to be very sort of strong and manly and never afraid of anything but that was not the case and I really enjoyed that aspect though um, the description of women in this book I didn't particularly like which was not surprising um, I mean I'm like used to observing these sort of aspects in all the books so that was not surprising but still kind of disappointing where you're like oh again like the woman that that needs to be saved by men it's really annoying but um that's something you you have to expect when reading a classic a book that is more than 100 years old then you'll definitely find those kind of descriptions so prepare for that 
And another aspect that I noticed in this book is that in some places, some passages are very brutal and dramatic as well. Um, and I was surprised that this book was apparently a bestseller when it was published, so during the time of the 19th century. And I didn't didn't expect people to obviously enjoy such brutal and dramatic stories and also some passages were very sort of almost theatrical you know the way the journal entries of the individual characters ended was like goodbye everyone and goodbye to the world basically which was a very sort of felt a little Shakespearean almost but yeah so overall I really um, am happy that I read this book it was one that I I'd wanted to read for a while, you know, studying English makes you aware of the many, many classics that are out there and the many works of literature you don't know and that you'd like to know because they are so much part of the canon and also, as I said before, influence popular culture these days. So yeah, I definitely recommend, though maybe you'd like to, oh, one thing I'd, I didn't mention before is maybe you'd like to listen to the audiobook and read along. That is another thing that I, um, one of my friends did. So that is another tip. So, but yeah, I definitely recommend reading classics because it gives such an insight into a period of time and also about themes and topics that are still popular these days. So thank you so much for watching and I hope you gained some insight into this topic of literature and I hope you also feel encouraged to read classics yourself. Let me know which classics are your favourites and I'll see you very soon. Bye bye.